Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be uh, talking about an important question that came up. Should you test out your new gun before you start carrying it or consider it reliable to use for home defense? Okay, now, before you guys start laughing and saying that the answer is obvious, consider that lots of people watching this channel are new to guns, okay? Uh, you know, in fact, that's part of our mission to continue to grow our ranks and turn non-gun owners into gun owners, okay? Um, so, so we can expect that lots of people out there don't know the answer to this and it's up to us to train them. And also, you know, basically I'm making this video for you guys. So you have some reference material that you can show them. Okay. So, um, uh, and here's the, the answer is that before you can consider any gun, uh, reliable, you have to shoot at least 300 rounds through that gun with the ammunition that you intend to carry that gun with or, or use it for home defense, okay? So you, you don't just don't just test the gun out with 300 rounds of target ammo and then think that you can put like hollow points through it uh, or plus P loads and the gun is going to work reliably. Um, you know, you got to test the gun out with the ammunition that you intend to use, okay? 300 rounds, bare minimal, okay? Um, so, uh, the, now, mind you, it's not just beginners that need to know this, because I've also come across people that, ha that have owned guns, you know, for some time, but, you know, it, just because people own guns doesn't mean that they shoot guns regularly, uh, doesn't mean that they are really trained on the guns, um, so, so there's plenty of people out there that have been, that have owned guns, but really don't shoot regularly and are not involved with the gun community that don't regularly watch gun videos, and they just don't know the answer to this, right? So, it's us to it's up to us to, to to help them out okay so um there's three reasons why a gun uh would not be reliable okay and and this includes all guns including brand name guns including glocks and sigs and berettas and h&k's right uh as a full-time gun instructor 12 years i've seen all these guns at a gun range where they were uh, not working reliably, right? And the three reasons are, number one, user error, okay? Uh, these guns are recall operated. In order for this gun to work properly, you gotta hold the frame steady while the slide is going back and forth, okay? If the whole gun is going like this, uh, you're bleeding off energy, right? So that means the slide's not gonna come back all the way. Uh, and what that means is that the gun is going to either uh, fail to uh, fail to eject or fail to feed. Okay, so so the first the first reason why these guns don't work reliably is because of user error. And until you unless you until you practice right until you actually shoot that gun with 300 rounds, uh, you're not gonna um, you know you're not gonna know. Now you might say, hey, but I had this other gun that I've been carrying for so long, and you know, I never ha I don't have problems with that gun, um, so I can. Ex so obviously, I don't have a problem with my technique. Well, here's the thing: as you, when you shift, change from one gun to another gun, even even within the same brand, right? Uh, you know, that recoil spring might have been a lot more broken in. The new recoil spring on the new gun is going to probably be a lot stiffer. So you might get into cycling issues, right? Because of the newer, stiffer recoil spring. So you got to test the gun out, 300 rounds, okay? Uh, with the ammunition that you intend to carry. Uh, number two, uh, the second reason why I find that guns don't work reliably uh, is because the ammunition is basically uh, mismatched to the gun. And I don't mean they're putting the wrong caliber in there. Um, what I'm, you know, basically sometimes guns can be finicky, right? I've seen guns that, you know, you know, let's say nine millimeter guns, they work well with one brand but not another brand, um, especially with the new guns. Where the where the recoil spring can be very stiff, okay. Um, with some of the cheaper target loads, it may not come back all the way, and you might get those failure to feeds, or uh, you may also have uh, problems where the gun doesn't go to, to lock back, right? So it, it, the gun might be cycling, but it might not be locking back on the last round. Uh, and so if it's not locking back on the last round, but the gun is working otherwise, that's an indication that you're like right there on the boundary between the gun cycling and not cycling okay so uh the gun is going to probably work if you're holding a good you know if you got good presentation right it's going to work but then if you're in an awkward position or shooting the gun one-handed or in your in your offhand the gun's probably not going to cycle right so you've got to test the gun out 
uh, and, I'll, and I'll demonstrate in your offhand, one-handed, in order for, to be sure that that gun is going to reliably work under all conditions. And you should also test it under different weather conditions, not just on sunny days. Test it out on wet, wet days and cold days, right? And the number three, the reason why I have found that uh, new guns are not reliable is because there's something mechanically wrong with the gun. Um, as far as like off brands, right? Uh, I've seen quite a few of them, right, at the range where like there's like something broken in the gun. Uh, you know, uh, it might be the mat, it might be the the, uh, the magazine release. You know, it, you know, it might be the the slide release. It, it, you know, it might be something else. It might be that the rounds aren't chambering. Maybe the, the, the chamber slightly out of spec and uh, Some of the cases are not ejecting, you know, so with the off brands I, I over 12 you know, we're talking about 12 years now having trained thousands of people So I that's something that I see, you know, not like every day, but I see it from time to time now I've even seen name brands like Glocks, SIGs, H&Ks uh, doesn't happen often but occasionally they will, there will also be some type of a, uh, of a, uh, you know, of a fault with the gun. I've had a Kimber. I actually did a video on the Kimber um, where the guy was very disappointed. You know, he had this expensive gun. The gun had two problems. One problem was the magazines weren't going, weren't uh, seating properly. I mean, I'm going on memory. One problem was with the magazines, and the other problem was with the cases. Uh, feeding into the, you know, coming up and feeding uh, into the, um, uh, sliding up past the ejector. It was just slightly mismatched ejector, but not ejector. The, the extractor was slightly off. So as they were coming up and trying to slide into the extractor, it was mismatched and they just weren't getting up in there. The gun had to go back, uh, you know, to, had to go back to Kimber. Uh, so, you know, even even with these name brand guns, okay, you're, you're gonna, you know, there's, there's a chance, right? All if you, I mean, manufacturers aren't going to advertise it; they're not going to make it public. But all, all, all guns, all machines, they they expect a certain error rate. You know, certain, you know, it might be a half of one percent or whatever. But if you if you're in the business of selling thousands of Glocks or thousands of SIGs or thousands of H&Ks, you know, there's going to be a small percentage that, that, that are defective. That's just, just what, what the odds are, okay? Um, remember, when these guns are sold to you, right, uh, they don't test fire them, okay? And they don't certainly don't test fire them with lots of different types of ammunition, you know, lots of different brands of ammunition. So usually when you buy a brand new gun, it's never been fired. Okay, so how do they know? I, I mean, you know, all the, all, the best they can do is measure the parts and, you know, say, hey, they all seem to, you know, fit the specs, but they've not, the gun's never actually been test fired, okay? So that's why you got to test fire the gun. You got to shoot 300 rounds on that gun with the ammunition that you intend to carry in order for that gun, uh, in order for you to consider that gun reliable, okay? So the way that I test my guns, I normally shoot... Um, I normally shoot uh, right-handed, right? So, put a mag here in the gun. Okay. Okay. So uh, normally, this is my presentation, right? So come over here. Right here. So the way I test my guns out is I'll put it in my left hand and I will shoot it one-handed uh, in my left hand. Okay. That's how I test the guns out. So I want to make sure that the gun goes all the way to lockout, okay, when I'm shooting it in my other hand, one-handed. Uh, that's how I know that the gun is reliable. So I don't care if you build the gun like I built this one or you buy the gun. I don't care who makes it. I mean, generally, I recommend name brands uh, for everyday carry, especially if you're not in the position where you can test, the, where you can shoot the gun every day, right? I shoot this gun every day, so I know it's reliable. Uh, but if, if, if you're not in the position to shoot the gun every day, I definitely recommend for self-defense purposes, stick to the uh, military and police tested guns. Um, not because they're better, but they basically they've tested it under more un under a wider variety of conditions, right? They don't just shoot the guns when it's nice and, you know, 70 degrees and sunny outside. You know, they'll shoot when it's like snowy, like, you know, and rainy like it is today, okay? Um, so stick to the military and police uh, tested guns. Unless you're, you know, unless you're in the business of shooting guns every day like I am, okay? Um, 
So that, that's an important thing for you guys. So now the other thing I'm gonna put out there, um, let me put this away. Um, when you're talking to these new shooters, um, one of the things that you gotta bring up is, you know, like when they're training, how are they going to know whether it's the problem is with them or with the ammunition or with the gun? Uh, it really helps if they go to the range with, with somebody that's experienced, right? That can help isolate, right? Uh, and, you know, so I, generally I recommend that they go, they're brand new to guns, go with a professional full time instructor that does it every day. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not specifically telling you guys to come to me because you might be on the other side of the country from me, right? So, so I'm not, I'm not trying to sell myself here. What I'm saying is that if, if you are new to guns, uh, you know, go to the, go, go to the gun range with a gun instructor. Uh, it's actually going to save you a lot of money in the long run because you're not going to waste ammunition uh, trying to figure out how to basically reinvent the wheel. Have somebody teach you how to do it the right way, and then basically from that, because if you know from that point going forward, you're practicing the correct way, right? Rather than wasting all that ammunition, learning to do something incorrectly, getting jams, not knowing what the purpose, what what the reason the jam is, you know, you're better off just you know. And all gun ranges usually have some gun instructor that they're affiliated with. Um, you know, have a gun instructor observe you. If you're new to guns, have somebody observe you to make sure that your form is good, that you're not basically just wasting ammunition, that you're practicing the correct way, okay? And the other thing I'm gonna tell you guys, uh, again, most of you guys watching this video, I know that you're, most of you guys are gonna be experienced, so this video isn't specifically intended for you guys, it's intended for you guys to have some resource material to share and show to your family and friends, uh, because a lot of times, you know, especially with family, they may not wanna to listen to you, but if they listen to it from somebody else, they, they might, be more willing to listen to that other person okay uh same thing goes with the wives like i don't train like here's the thing i don't train my wife to shoot guns okay i have another gun instructor i pay another gun instructor to train my wife okay because she's not gonna listen to me so that's just that's just the reality of it now uh, other thing that's important for the noobs newbies when you're talking to them tell them uh, first of all before they start carrying gun get lots of training right get, because it, because learning to shoot guns you know, at the gun range, target shooting is very different from using a gun for self-defense. There's lots of things that they got to know beyond that, when to shoot, when to not shoot. But uh, one of the things that you're going to want to tell them is to make sure they get a prepaid lawyer. So if they're ever in a self-defense type of situation, they've got a lawyer on hand uh, to basically bail them out and, and, and advise them. Uh, the service that I use is U.S. Law Shield. Okay, uh, Part of the reason why I use these guys is because they're cheap. Okay, It is... Basically eleven dollars per month, okay, uh, with the coupon code. This coupon code, depending on your state, gets you different things, right? The promo code is Pocono Shooting, right there. You, uh, you gotta register, um, basically sign up through the website, which is uslawshield.com or their app. And then uh, uh, when you enter the promo code in the code field, uh, you'll get an additional discount. Now it 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 it, it changes from state to state. In some states. You get, uh, they waive the sign up fee, which I think is something like uh, $20. They waive that. Uh, in other states, they give you like two months or one month or whatever. Some states you get both. So uh, this promo code is gonna, it's definitely gonna get you some benefit. And I don't know exactly what it's gonna be in your state, but I wanna put it out there so you guys have it, okay? Uh, and the reason, basically, for the next couple of videos that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention this. Uh, because I don't know how long I'm going to have this promo code, right, where you guys are getting a discount. So um, that's why I wanted to, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop putting it out there for you guys to share. They basically gave me this promo code to give to my customers at the range, you know, that I'm training, right? But here's the thing, all you guys watching my videos, as far as I'm concerned, you guys are my customers too, right? Because you're all getting training from me. It doesn't matter if you pay me or not pay me. Uh, so, so by all means, use the promo code. Uh, and anyway, as far as the service, the, 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 the way, there's three ways that I uh, use this legal service. The most common way that I use it is I just send the, the, the lawyer and uh, gun questions, right? Because sometimes I will have gun questions. Um, you know, it, like for example, you know, if uh, a while ago I had a question, you know, is it legal for me to carry this Polymer 80 that I built, right, in my state, right? I kind of knew the answer. Uh, already, but I wanted to get the answer in writing from a lawyer, right? So, uh, you know, and I saved it. And now I have, um, you know, I, I, I have a, if, if I ever did have an issue, 
I have something in writing from a lawyer that says, hey, perfectly legal in my state, especially if I'm traveling down near Philadelphia, right? Because I'm in Pennsylvania. In most of Pennsylvania, it's, 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 it's definitely, this, this is definitely not a problem, okay? The problem with places like Philadelphia is a lot of times the cops down there, they don't know the laws, okay? So uh, if I'm going to be going to Philadelphia, I have a printout of that email basically with me just in case I ever have a problem. So that's the first way. The first way I use this legal service is I ask questions, okay? The second way is if I'm traveling, if I'm traveling to a different state, like if I go to Ohio, can I bring this gun with me? Can I carry this gun over there? So that's a, so what they'll do is they'll give you an itinerary. Like if I want to go from here to Florida, they'll tell me, you know, what states can I carry the gun through? What states I have to unload the gun, right? And what states I, I should avoid altogether because this gun might be illegal. You know, the unserialized gun might be illegal in those states. So, so I will ask them for an itinerary. And uh, the, the, the third way I would use these if I was ever actually in a self-defense type of situation. A lot of times I'll put that as reason number one. I'm putting this as reason number three because in all likelihood, you know, I, you know the type of lifestyle that I live it is not likely I would ever have to use a gun for self-defense, but if I ever did, I mean, these are the guys I'm calling, okay? Um, you know, you never want to talk to the police, uh, you know, other than, you know, basically just establish that, you know, first of all, get the gun back in the holster. I've covered this in other videos. This is a quick review. Get the gun back in the holster. Establish you're the victim. Uh, preserve the evidence. Point out that, hey, there's the knife. There's the gun. Here are my shelf cases. If, it's, if the wind is blowing or if the stuff was moved, Point that out to the police. Point out the witnesses, right? Right? Don't you can't you don't want to make a statement, but you can tell the police, hey, those people saw what happened. Why don't you talk to them so they can get a statement from them? Um, and and thirdly, after that, you want these guys on the phone. They're basically going to tell the police that that they're representing you, representing you, and they are not to ask any questions. Uh, sometimes, like you know, you can get a police officer that's a lot of, a little bit pushy and is trying to get you to talk. Uh, but if you've got your lawyer on the phone telling the, telling the police officers not to ask you any questions, uh, they're going to definitely back off at that point point, stop asking you questions. So hope this video was useful. And I, I know I threw a whole bunch of extra stuff in there. The main point is that any gun that you're going to carry, you got to shoot 300 rounds with the ammunition, uh, that you, with the ammunition that you intend to carry that gun with. Uh, and if, the gun does not work, right? If you get jams or whatever, then you've got to figure out why, right? Why is that gun not working? Most likely reason it's a problem with you, right? Your form, your stance, your grip, okay? Uh, number two, there might be a problem with the ammunition. Uh, number three, there might actually be a problem with the gun, right? So you got you to gotta know the answer. You got to know why the gun isn't working and, and, and address it. And basically fix that, fix that problem so that the gun is working. So thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.